In the previous video, we saw how to use a Python list in a computational model involving many objects. In this video, we'll see an easy way to create a list containing many objects, and a simpler and more elegant way to loop through all the elements of a list. Suppose we want to create 60 arrows whose tails lie on the surface of a cylinder, and then later modify the arrows by changing their color and direction. Making a list by typing the attributes of 60 arrows is not an attractive option. Instead, we'll generate the arrows algorithmically, and we'll add the arrows to the list one by one as they are created. To add an object to the end of a list, we'll use the append method of a list. For example, if we have a list named myList, we could say myList.append myObject to add the object name myObject to the end of the list. Let's start creating our list of arrows. First, we'll create an empty list and call it ARRZ. We need to be careful not to use the word arrow, since that word already has a meaning in vPython. The axis of our cylinder will lie along the z-axis, so we'll assign the variable z an initial value of minus 0.1 and set the maximum value of z to slightly more than 0.1. The increment dz will be 0.05, and the radius of the cylinder will be 0.1. In order to take 12 steps as we go around the cylinder, we'll set d theta to pi over 6. Now, we can use two nested loops to create the arrows. The outer loop will step along the z-axis in increments of dz. We can omit a rate statement here because we don't need to see the arrows appear one at a time. It's okay to let the loop finish completely before displaying the arrows. For each value of z, we want the angular variable theta to run from 0 to 2 pi, so we'll initialize theta to 0 and nest a loop incrementing theta inside the z loop. For each value of z and theta, we'll use simple trig to position an arrow on the surface of the cylinder. Specify the color, shaft width, and axis of each arrow. Let's run the program. We do see the arrows. However, the list ARZ is still empty. The arrows aren't in the list. We can verify this by printing the length of the list. To get the arrows into the list, inside the loop after creating each arrow, we'll add it to the list by using append. This adds the object named A to the end of the list named ARRZ. Now, when we print the length of the list, we see that there are 60 elements in the list. To modify the arrows, we need to loop through all the elements in the list in order, starting at the beginning and going through one by one until the end. We could do this by referring to each list element by its index, as we did in the previous video, but there's an easier way. The statement for this arrow in ARZ says, start at the beginning of the list. Each time through the loop, advance to the next item of the list, and let me refer to it by the name, this arrow. We'll use a rate of three so we can see each arrow change. But now we don't need to use an index. We can simply instruct vPython to change the color of the arrow that is currently named this arrow. We can change the axis of the arrow currently named this arrow in the same way. When we run the program, we see that the for loop behaves in exactly the same way as a while loop using an index would. We didn't need an index variable at all. Python understood that we wanted to start at the beginning of the list and go through to the end one element at a time. Now for a challenge. Write a vPython program that uses a single while loop to create a list containing 40 boxes, with 20 of the boxes arranged in a circle in the xz plane and the other 20 arranged in a circle in the yz plane. Use append to add each box to the list as it is created. After you have the boxes, use a for loop 
To loop through the list of boxes, changing the color of each box. Use rate 2 so you can see the boxes change one by one. 